In this video, we will solve equations by completing the square that might give us irrational or complex solution. If we can't simplify the radical completely, we will simply simplify what we can. For example, in this problem, if we were to solve by completing the square, we first separate the variables from the numbers by adding 3 to both sides. We now have 2x squared minus 8x equals 3. Our next step is always to get the x squared alone by dividing by a, or the number in front. Dividing everything by 2 gives us x squared minus 4x equals 3 halves. Now we're ready to complete the square by finding the c, which is 1 half times b, or negative 4 in this case, squared. 1 half of negative 4 is negative 2 squared, which is 4. This is what we want to add to both sides of the equation. When we do, the left side will always be a perfect square. Square root of the first term, sine from the middle, square root of the last term. x minus 2 squared equals, on the right side, we'll need a common denominator, which we can get by multiplying by 2. 3 halves plus 8 halves gives us 11 halves. We can now get rid of the square by taking the square root of both sides. On the right side, you'll notice we have a square root of 2 in the denominator, but also under a radical. We'll need to rationalize this denominator by multiplying by root 2 on top and bottom. This gives us the square root of 22 over 2. Don't forget the plus or minus, square root 22 over 2. To get the x alone, we add 2 to both sides. And we get x equals 2, plus or minus root 22 over 2. Let's get a common denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by 2. 2 times 2 is 4, plus or minus the square root of 22 over the common denominator of 2. Let's try another example where the square root doesn't come out evenly, and we simply simplify what we can. In this problem, we'll start by subtracting 2 from both sides, separating the variables from the numbers. Next, we must divide by a, so the x squared has a known number in front of it. Remember, we divide every term by 5, so we get x squared minus 3 fifths x equals negative 2 fifths. We can now find c by taking 1 half of b, or the negative 3 fifths, squared. This is negative 3 tenths squared, or 9 over 100. By adding 9 over 100 to both sides, we've completed the square. On the left side, it will factor to a perfect square. The square root of the first term, sine from the middle, and the square root of the last term. On the right side, we need to multiply by 20 to get a common denominator, negative 80 over 100, plus 9 over 100. Oops, 2 times 20 is 40, negative 40 over 100. This is going to give us negative 31 over 100. We're now ready to take the square root of both sides, so that square and square root undo each other, and we get x minus 3 tenths equals, because there's a negative, it will come out as an i, root 31, square root of 100 is 10. Don't forget the plus or minus whenever we take the square root of both sides. To get x alone, we just have to add 3 tenths, and because we already have a common denominator, we can write our final answer as 3, plus or minus i root 31, all over the common denominator of 10. Simplify what we can when we can't take the root.